Toronto is an amazing world city, a world city that cares about its people. Telling multiple people's stories through the form of video is one of the many challenges cinematographers face. Any successful documentary series with so many different characters feels cohesive, but has a very specific look. There are so many different ways to execute this, but where do you even start? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly where you can start and go over the number one thing to do when shooting any type of project like this. When shooting any narrative style documentary, you are usually working in someone's space and making their life feel natural, but also elevated. This is done through the fundamentals of any cinematographer, and mainly with composition and lighting. But the number one thing that you have to consider that a lot of people aren't doing is keeping consistency in mind. You have to consider this when you're shooting any type of series with multiple interviews in multiple spaces. You have to choose a visual language for your project and keep that in mind when shooting the entire thing. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this by breaking down a series of interviews we did for a documentary for the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. And this was telling four individual stories across a series of six episodes. So how do you exactly start that and where do you really begin? How do you tell somebody's story or how do you get that story out of somebody as well? So it's obviously starting with a pre-interview, but then also having the spine of the entire piece that you're going to be using. And these are really done in the form of a master interview. And when considering any type of master interview, you have to consider exactly the visual storytelling that you want to portray. We are telling these stories of people basically running a marathon for the first time, maybe sixth time and their journey to get to that as well. So we are trying to empower these people. And then myself as a cinematographer, these are the things that I'm going to ask the directors. Exactly how do we wanna feel in these situations and how do we wanna portray these people? So like I've said so many times in so many other videos, I like to start off with context. And these are runners and they are running a marathon. For two of these people, this was their first time running a marathon. And then the other two gentlemen were seasoned marathon runners. So he's run a marathon before, he has to, he is running a race with his kids. So he's gonna be training for that. And this is her time, first time running a marathon. This is a giant undertaking. This is almost like four to six months of people's life to change tra train for this. So this is a challenge for everybody, no matter what the scale is. So now I can start talking about what this is going to be looking like as a cinematographer. These are the key things that I'm going to ask the director, and there's multiple directors on this, and what they wanted to make this feel like. So this is a challenge. We want to empower this. And how do you create a composition that is empowering how do we keep that consistency so we as you can see went with a center frame composition for everything we put everybody in the middle this is what i want you guys to look at these are the interviews that we kind of want to do so that's why we went with the center frame for everybody that was the most appropriate that we saw for this entire series too. Now, when it comes to lighting, this is a documentary. So I'm going to be keeping everything very natural. I'm going to use this space to the best of my abilities. We went into each of these spaces and we're like, how can we basically highlight the space in its best case and then use it to our advantage to actually light these subjects because these are real people's lives. So we only had two hours to actually get in the space and shoot the interview as well as load in and wrap out. So we're going to be using a very small kit to do this. And that was the whole vibe of this entire project. And that's where you usually dock it. Sometimes you don't use a lot of lights, but we want these interviews to at least look like something. They look good. So we're going to be exploring that next. But it's ultimately asking yourself what this is supposed to feel like and giving your context for everything. We're going to be looking at two of these interviews and we pretty much ran the same kit for everything. So our A camera was the FX9. So this was A cam. And then a B cam for this was the Sony FX6. The reason why we chose these cams, cameras is because of just the image quality you get for the amount of file size. We just wanted to keep this pretty nimble. All the B roll and everything was shot in combination with the FX9, FX6 and FX3. And these are amazing cameras to use when you're doing this style of work, feeling everything naturalistic. But there's enough information with those cameras as well as codecs to get everything that we needed. So the A cam was on a 50 millimeter and these were the DZO Vespid primes. And then we are, our B camera, which we don't see here, was on a 90 millimeter. But I just want to give you guys context. But we shot all of the um, interviews, the master interviews, especially with the A cam with all these center frames on the 50 millimeter. And then we backed the camera up to give us this wide frame. 
and then the 50 millimeter gives you that you know nice telephoto as well as very naturalistic look and for this room we lucked out because of all the windows and everything in the space this was a party room in uh, this gentleman's condo, so we had access to shoot that and we didn't necessarily just want to shoot it in his home. And then this had a bunch of windows to use. And then here is that fireplace that we have. And then our subject is here and then our A camera is here and then our camera was here. So this space allowed a great center frame off the bat. And because uh, we had these windows to utilize and that's exactly what we did. So we had all these windows open, but then we closed this window. So that one was the only one in play. And that was pretty much giving us a look and giving us all our ambient tone, but we still needed a little pop on him. And the light that we used for this was our, one of our favorite lights that we always like to use. But in this case, we had a lantern attachment on this. So we had the Forza 60B on a lantern boomed out over here. And this was on an AC stand. And then to just give you what that looks like, it's just a small light and then it has a big lantern on it. And then we skirt it off one side. And then this is just giving us a nice catch light and something to lift up his side of the face. We have a bunch of natural light coming in here. So we just saw that it wasn't just enough when we just needed a little bit more and we brought that lantern in. And this is exactly what we use for all of the interviews for this project. And this really gave off that light side as well as just lifting what we needed. Because there was no windows on the other side, this was already acting as a natural neg. And I believe that we just had a floppy on this side and some black material to do that. So this is giving my, me that contrast back in. And then you can see that on his shadow side and giving us a lot to work with. And then just because of the light bouncing back here, we get a nice hair light. So we were using the location to our advantage. And as soon as you walk into the location, you want to analyze this and say, hey, these are my windows. I'm going to shoot probably into my windows just to give me a natural light to work with because we didn't have time to set up a bunch of lights and use a bunch of different things. So this was our basically go to kit for everything. And then we shot this consistently across the interviews. Our next interview was an interesting one because we were dealing with multiple talent. And this is why we like to use the Forza 60B with that lantern or any little light will do because it gives you just the light that you need as a small key light to go across multiple subjects. So in this room, we're shooting on the same cameras and everything, but there's a little bit of interest and something that we had to play with because of how the room was oriented. So that's kind of our room. And then we have a bunch of windows on the side here. And then we just ended up putting black material over those windows because there was a window here and that's not something that we couldn't necessarily black out just due to the um, nature of it where it was and the amount of black material so we basically had to pick a side and then also the sun was setting at this point so we didn't want to have that variable of all this light coming in and then the sun wasn't on this side so what we did is actually put a small sheet of diffusion and it was just a bed sheet that we put over that to kind of harsh it, uh, to soften that. And that automatically gives us a side to start lighting from, establishing a light and shadow side. So we had our A camera here, and then we had our B camera here, which was handheld shooting uh, nice tight inserts of going back and forth, whoever we were actually talking to. So our couch here, and then our four talent here. So basically we already established a light and shadow side. This is gonna be my shadow, so we're gonna use that light to bring it up. So we had that Forza 60B just boomed out and that was with the lantern. And then this is just giving this nice wrap that we see. Obviously this isn't super commercial. This is like a low contrast ratio, but it feels very natural and it feels very real to the spaces that we're shooting. We don't want a very dramatic or high contrast interview for something that is supposed to be very lighthearted. We have is a dad with his three beautiful children and this is supposed to be something that's very heartwarming so we're going to basically light it the same way with a low contrast ratio we don't want anything too harsh or anything through too dramatic we have a lot of nice smiles to work with and this is something that we saw that was very appropriate so we just have that 60b with that lantern just hung here and throughout these all these interviews this was at max power and this is giving us a tiny tiniest catch light to them because it's just big enough to see that and then we this was motivated 
by this light that was coming through here, which we diffused with that. And then with the black material on the side, I know we we're still working with a bunch of walls that were white, so we're getting a lot of bounce, but we still do have some shadow on the left side of our subjects, and it is enough to not be super flat. So this is exactly what we worked with. We basically went into each of the spaces, analyzed where the lighting was coming from, and then put our lights exactly there to motivate it and bring it back even further, and then just on the opposite side, just have some sort of neck. And this doesn't have to be a floppy. This can be just black material that you tape to the wall or just clip to anything that is there. As we just looked at those interviews and we're talking about consistency, the next thing I wanna talk about is how do you develop that across so many different stories? Everybody is has one goal in mind. They want to complete this marathon, but how do you exactly shoot that to be consistent because you have so many relative different stories? The general story is the same, that everybody is training for this marathon on, but everybody has their own path to get there. So everybody's internal story is going to be different, but the general story is already there. So the way to consistently do that is enter everybody's space. And for this example here, go through their morning routine and what that exactly looks like. Up at the left, we have our talent here. He likes to run early in the morning and that's exactly what he's doing here. He's getting ready for a run. And what we did in these spaces, we didn't light anything. We were just shooting on the 25 millimeter Vespid as well as the 50 millimeter Vespid and just going with the flow in terms of shooting their talent. So he's just walking from here to the door and then this is just already backlit from that light that we have in the hallway. So this is the, exactly what we're looking for. We're looking just to sh shoot into the lights that are already there. So this is going to pop him out and this is obviously heavy contrast, but this is the documentary. This is supposed to feel real. This is what his morning feels like. It's not bright and airy. And then we just analyze the room and say, we can just turn these lights off. Okay, let's run it. You get ready for a run. And then we go over to this subject here and we can analyze exactly what ask her what she likes to do in the morning. And she likes to basically be in her space and she likes to get ready or they start with a coffee and tea. So the consistency of process is everybody getting ready in their own space in the morning and what they like to do. In this case here, we have um, our talent getting his kids ready for school. This is just analyzing, turning all the lights in the background on so we have a nice natural backlight. Obviously this is more heavy contrast, but this is what is real and this is what their morning looks like. And then in this case we here, we have them ready, getting ready for a morning run. So when you're asking for consistency and shooting across so many different stories, is shoot the same action of everybody and then you could easily cut to that. It's basically telling one story through each of their different lives because it's everybody doing the similar action of starting their morning routine, but everybody has their own individual things that they're doing throughout. So when you're shooting these scenes and you're shooting multiple people's spaces and everything like that, just do the same thing across everybody's space and then you'll see in posts or when you're developing the story and working through these interviews that you have something to cut to when people are talking about what that morning looks like or what their trials in their life look like. The last thing I want to talk about consistency is this series of hero shots that we have here. And then what I mean by hero shots is when you start breaking the fourth wall and they're looking directly into the camera. So this is basically after a post run. And then everything that is associated with a post run is usually like the runner's high. I don't know if there we have a lot of runners out there, but the runner's high is just basically the feeling you feel great. And then that is uh, leading to empowerment. Running makes them feel good. So they're at this point, they're empowered and they are training for something that is bigger than even themselves. They are training for a marathon. And then we associate this with a hero shot. So we like to shoot this both at 24 FPS and then also 60 frames per second. So we have something to work with. We always like to obviously keep everything consistent, but also give us ourselves options. So this is us interviewing them after the run, telling them how we feel, and then stepping back and shooting these hero shots where like they're looking directly into camera, breaking the fourth wall. I feel great about my run. I feel great training into this journey. Although it's hard, I am loving every second of this. And when we did this for each of these people, we have her after her running with her run club and she feels great. So we're going to do that hero shot. So we have this father figure with his three daughters and it's a privilege that he gets to train them and they love doing it as well. So it's a family activity. So they all feel great about it. We have this Gabriel training for his, I think at this point was one of his 20th marathons. 
And then he feels great about training because he, this is something that he loves and is passionate about. And then we have this father figure here who uses running to take away the stress. And this is something that he is passionate about as well. So it's shooting the same thing with all these different stories. And when we realize that we have to keep this consistency, you have to keep a visual language constant throughout a documentary series, it's because we did research. We looked at so many documentaries on Netflix and stuff that we liked with multiple different people. And we realized that they just shot the same thing for all these different stories. They shot all the same scenarios and basically situations but then let it play out because everybody has their own routine. So when you're going into any documentary series or anything about interviewing or telling somebody's story, just keep these things in mind when you have to bridge multiple stories, because that is the biggest thing that we even struggled with with this project is bridging the stories together to make a cohesive story.